Hi everyone, my name is Adam Kane. I'm a lecturer at University College Dublin. And today I'm going to discuss a study. I'm working on a collaboration with Kevin Healy and Thomas Gearham, as well as Aaron Monagem, concerning the macroecology of African small mammals. Indeed, I'm giving this presentation on behalf of my colleague Aaron, who couldn't attend just due to some teaching responsibilities, but just to note this is very much the result of his hard work. A brief bio on Ara before I begin. He's a professor of biology at the University of Eswatini, where he studies terrestrial ecology across a multitude of groups. And much of the data set that we use is based on 10 years of Ara's efforts in the field across Sub-Saharan Africa. To begin, we're all aware that species richness patterns have been used in a variety of different ways. For example, um, here's a map showing a richness of bats across Africa with brighter colors indicating more species. And we can use a map like this to identify hotspots to conserve. So it's this region here. Species richness has also been related to ecosystem services provided by the environment. And of course, species richness patterns are a mainstay of macroecology and present us with these interesting patterns of increasing diversity as we move from the poles and to the equator and all of these sorts of patterns and beg for some processes to explain them. The protagonists in our case are African small mammals, in particular bats, rodents and shrews. And you can see the sample size of species in the brackets here as well. So pretty comprehensive data set. The substantial variation of the body size across these groups too. In the bats, we move from the tiny Afronic to Asnana at four grams up to 370 grams with this representative Hypsignatus monstrosus. And kind of similar ranges within the rodents, going from six grams in most minotoides up to 150 grams in Potamus. Um, slightly narrow body size range within the shrews with uh, a range of two grams, up to, say 62 grams with Crocodura. Africa itself is an incredibly diverse continent, and it's not easily grouped, but one effort by Peter Linder to find seven bioregions. The Saharan, which everyone is familiar with, extends across North Africa, but that's not one we'll focus on here, instead of turning our attention to the Sub-Saharan regions. Um, in the Northeast, we have the Ethiopian region, which is characterized by mountains. The Somalia region in the Horn of Africa is dry and desert-like. The large um, south central Zambesian is characterized by broadleaf Luombo woodlands. And um, southern Africa is pretty diverse itself and hence pretty difficult to, to characterize, but much of it is at high altitudes and is either covered with um, dry or grassy plains. As we sort of swing around to the, the west, and the Congolian region stretches across tropical Africa and is covered by, by rainforest. And to note to this, we have the Sudanian region, which is covered in savanna. The data set that we have comes from each of the six regions. The numbers reflect the subset of the data are assembled and reflect distinct sites in which the bats, rodents, and insectivores have been collected. There are, of course, lots of other studies from which the data could have been collected, but we set some kind of basic criteria that they had to meet before they'd be included in the study, such as being collected post 1980 um, and that the, the actual effort at the site ran for at least two seasons and a, a given field expedition was carried on for more than a couple of days. We can now turn our attention to some of the aspects of diversity that we're interested in measuring, um, in particular looking at beta diversity. And the cartoon that we have here uh, showcases this quite nicely where we have three sites, each with five species, the same five species too. And alpha diversity is five because it corresponds to the number of species at the site level, so within the circle. Um, gamma diversity looks at the um, diversity at the regional level, so to say within the whole area, we still only have five species at that level. Beta diversity is then just the gamma divided by the alpha, which is one in this case. So conceptually, beta diversity tells us something about how species diversity changes as we move from one site to another. But importantly, beta itself can be 
and partition into two different components, term nestedness and, and turnover. Uh, panel A represents nestedness, and you can see that at site A3, it's a subset of A2, which itself is a subset of A1. Uh, but panel B shows turnover, so we have six pieces of each site, but they're not subsets. Um, and despite these differences, if we calculate and the beta measure overall, we get the same value. And this is critical to justifying this partitioning because they can often reflect different processes. For instance, nestedness can arise from extinctions or colonizations along some sort of uh, gradient, whereas turnover can come about on things like species sorting. And if we take a look at how this applies to our own data set, here's an example on just the bats with unpartitioned beta diversity. In this instance, the graph shows when beta is equal to zero, the sites are the same in terms of the species composition. And when uh, beta is, equals, is equal to one, it means the sites are completely different. And the way that each of these scores is calculated is by looking at scores within each region. So within the Congolian, looking at the sites within those uh, specific Congolian sites. With that example in mind, we can now take a look across the three groups and the three different aspects of biodiversity, the total and the partitioned aspects. And we can see that overall, bats have lower beta diversity, rodents intermediate levels, shrews the highest. And further, it seems that reduced turnover is associated with increased mobility. And the reason we say this is that bats are obviously can fly, so they have a much um, greater opportunity to move around. And um, rats and rodents are, are much greater at dispersing or better at dispersing than the shrews. There's also increased nestedness with increased mobility, which is again um, reflected most clearly in the bats. So we get the subsetting occurring in the bats, but within the rats and shrews, it seems like turnover is doing most of the work. We can also look at differences among regions rather than within regions. So say, for instance, comparing the Zambesian to the Ethiopian. Um, and for example, in this instance here, we can see that lighter colors indicate similarity in species composition between two distinct regions. So here, the Congolian and the Sudanian are quite similar. So they have a low beta diversity, whereas the dark colors will indicate quite a bit of difference between the two. And as with the comparisons within regions, we can take a look at this across all the different taxonomic groups and across the different measures. And just broadly speaking, what I wanted to see here in general is that turnover is darker than nestedness, suggesting turnover is driving differences among the regions. Another way of looking at this is by comparing sites that are a certain distance apart. And here, by looking at a measure of spatial autocorrelation distance, we can take as a boundary the distance when the autocorrelation between sites is no longer significant. So, for example, we need to travel around 700 kilometers before we get no correlation between sites for the bats. A shorter distance is required for the rodents at around 1200, and a shorter distance again for the shrews. Which again seems to suggest that the dispersibility is probably driving these patterns of of beta diversity. This ordination plot is another way in which we can look at species composition and differences across the different regions. And we find when we apply this method is there's a bit of a divide between the Congolian and Sudanian on the left-hand side of the ordination panel and Ethiopian, Zambesian, Somalian and Southern. Now, if we group those regions on the map here on the left hand side, it looks something like this. But it is a bit surprising because uh, the Sudanian, which is in purple, and the Zambesian are pretty similar in habitat structure. And this really points to some sort of interesting historical reasons that are at play that are driving these patterns rather than ecological processes per se. And just briefly, of course, there's much more to diversity um, than taxonomy. We can capture it in a couple of other ways. It's just by relying on functional slash morphological diversity, as well as phylogenetic diversity, and taking into account 
uh, things like branch length. We set up something similar for these comparisons looking at within regions uh, and uh, across regions at the phylogenetic and the functional level. And briefly, when we base our comparisons on something besides species richness, we can see different patterns overall in that the functional and phylogenetic beta diversity are both relatively low for all comparisons and the relative contribution of nestedness is higher and then for taxonomic beta diversity. So it seems like there's something slightly different going on that's driving these patterns if we look at um, something beyond just the taxonomic level. So really, you know, there's a lot to be done with this data set to determine some of the processes driving these macroecological patterns. And this is really a, a starting point um, that's based off of um, our continued work in the field and this collection of this huge data set. Just to, to finish, Ara asked me to plug some of his books, including two works on bats and rodents. The bats have been updated to a second edition that um, cover aspects focused in on the biogeography and taxonomy of each of the groups um, in a, a much more depth. So have a look at those if they pique your interest. And with that, I'd just really like to thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to take any questions. Though as I can't deal with myself, I'll pass on to Ara. And I'm also hosting um, a poster presentation at 11.30 today, looking at vultures in Africa. And I'd be happy to uh, chat to you then about this work. So thank you.